Hey guys, my name is Haley, and today I'm going to be filming a wrap up of all the books that I've read so far in 2020. In the interest of me not talking for 16 hours and like trying to remember things about books I didn't have much to say about, I actually saw someone else do this. I'll leave her channel down below. She's a booktuber that I found recently who started doing her wrap ups in a way where she would like talk about all the books that she needed to talk about or had things to say about and then would just list the books that she didn't have much to say about that she did read at the end. So I think I'm gonna try and do that. So like anything that was really uh, three star or like even below a four star unless for some reason I rounded it up to a four because I actually quite liked it. And I will just list those at the end. I'm gonna start with, so we're gonna combine that idea. This is so disorganized. <laughs> we're gonna combine that idea with I want to read them in like least liked to most liked which i'm really gonna start with like four stars or 3.75 stars so it's not gonna be like disliked to most liked but you get the gist we're gonna start there <laughs> i've read like 43 books i'm not gonna go over all of them because i definitely had to split this up a little bit in the interest of me not wanting to cry trying to remember all of the books and like edit all of the pictures in because all i've been reading this year is audiobooks I'm just gonna get started. We're gonna talk about the vast majority of the books that I've read this year. If you really wanna see every single thing that I've read and what I said about it, I'll leave my Goodreads link down below. You can check it out there, but we're just gonna go about this in the best way for my brain to be able to handle 40 some books. <laughs> so starting with some four star reads. So we're gonna talk about the very first book that I read this year that I actually read on ebook. Who am I? I don't read ebooks very often at all. And that's because I didn't have a Kindle, which I do now. But the first book I read this year was No Exit by Taylor Adams, I believe. Here's gonna be me forgetting like all of the authors. <laughs> so sorry. This was a thriller. They get stuck at a red stop, rest stop during a snowstorm. They walk outside to try and get a cell signal and they see what they think is a child locked in the cage in the back seat of someone's car who was also stopped at the rest stop. And it's them trying to figure out how this happened if they actually saw what they thought they saw who is the person kidnapping children and it was really fun it was like i gave it a 4.25 it would probably range around a 4.5 i would love to read more by this author but it was so much fun next up i have the two lives of lydia bird this is a contemporary novel i've been reading a lot more contemporary this year than i've read in literal years probably since my sarah Dessen days back in like high school it has a slight like I don't know if you would call it magical realism maybe aspect to it in that this girl was with her boyfriend for like many many years and then he passes away in a car accident and she's trying to move on from his death but she starts developing this thing that when she goes to sleep she gets sent to another parallel universe essentially where her boyfriend is alive and did not die in that car crash so it's her struggling of which world she wants to live in and like which one was reality. And it was really fascinating. It was a really interesting like topic to discuss with grief, like and how hard it is to deal with and like the consequences of living in, of not living in reality, I think it would be a good way to put it. And I, this wasn't my favorite of Josie Silver's books. I will say I will be talking about her other book later but I thought this was a really solid read and I did quite enjoy it and I will keep an eye on this author in the future when she comes out with anything else. Next up I have two books by the same author which I gave I think the exact same rating and I am definitely interested in checking out more of her books and that is Simone St. James. The first one I read being The Sundown Motel which I've heard about on booktube from like the horror thriller booktubers that I follow for a while and let me tell you this was so much fun. If you watched the tv show Supernatural ever in your life please read this book because it feels like an old school supernatural show episode and i loved it so much i've apparently begun to realize not only do i like paranormal and like my like urban fantasy and stuff but i also really like it in my thrillers if the thriller turns out my biggest pet peeve lately has been if a thriller like teases something to be paranormal and then ends up not being paranormal and i'm like please just make it paranormal. I don't want it to be something like weird in real life. Yeah, that's no fun. But <laughs> yeah, I really, really enjoyed these. I read The Sundown Motel, which was probably my favorite of the two. I would probably give that a four star rather than the 3.75 thinking about it now. And the other book I read by Simone St. James was The Broken Girls, which her books tend to be 
from what I understand, told in like alternate timelines of like one in the past and one in the present. And the timelines intertwine as the book goes on. And it's really, really fascinating. The Broken Girls was about a boarding school where a girl died many years ago that was related to our main character. And I just really enjoyed both of her books. I think these are her two newest releases. I think she has a lot of older ones. And I can't decide if I want to go back into the backlist because I think a lot of them are historical fiction based. But I loved her writing so much. And if she comes out with anything new, I will pick it up immediately. And then I have two more books that I found personally relatable. If you watched my favorite books of last year video, which I will leave linked down below. These are two books that are basically following nannies, which also seems to be one of my new favorite things to read about. <laughs> the first of them being Such a Fun Age by... <sighs> I'm blanking on the author name. It'll be on your screen. <laughs> but this was about a girl who's like around my age who is a nanny and she gets harassed in a store because the family asked her to come in like watch the baby it's not a baby she's like two or three years old watch the kid for a while so they could handle something going on in the family and she goes to a store and she is a woman of color and she gets harassed in the store for being with this white baby and her perspective was one of the most relatable perspectives in the sense of where she was at in her life that I really really enjoyed it and I just found the story fascinating the way she related to the child is so relatable I've been raising the same child I've worked for two different families but the one that I've been working for since she was born I've been with her for three years and I cannot imagine like not being around her and that was a big aspect in this book of whether or not she would move on from this nannying position and I related so hard and it broke my heart so I really enjoyed this I believe I gave it 3.75 stars I lied I gave it 4.25 stars I was like 3.75 does not sound right and then another one which isn't quite a nannying position but it's very very similar to the point where <laughs> this is probably one of just the weirdest books that I read because it's the strangest concept and that's literally why I picked it up <laughs> and that is nothing to see here and this is a book about a girl who is friends with someone who is now rich and she was like one of the only people that was nice to her and she gets in touch with this girl later on in her life and this woman asks her to come help take care of these children that she has been given like been told to take care of because of her husband dealing with a past family or like an ex-wife's kids because they passed away and the catches that sounds very contemporary you would think oh that's kind of like interesting like this lady becomes their nanny but no the catch is that the children catch on fire like they just spontaneously combust sometimes and i literally heard that premise i don't even remember who i saw it whose channel i saw it on but i heard that premise and i was like what <laughs> a nanny who was watching two children that randomly catch on fire when they get upset sign me up <laughs> and I think I ended up giving this like a 4.25 4.5 stars because it's such a bizarre concept and I can't even say if you're like a super plot driven person maybe you wouldn't love this because like nothing happens besides this woman coming in and watching these children and like becoming attached to them and like trying to make sure they don't catch on fire <laughs> but it was so much fun I want to own this book so bad and the cover just explains it all <laughs> Next up, I'm going to talk about three nonfiction. Well, I guess two of them are nonfiction. One's just like a random book that I'm going to talk about first. Oh, wait, I actually own this. And that is, if you've been on my channel for any period of time and you're not brand new, you probably know that I love the musical Dear Evan Hansen and I own a lot of like things related to it. I saw it last summer at Playhouse Square, which is the big theater near me, and cried like a baby. <laughs> but I love Dear Evan Hansen. I've bought every book and like paraphernalia related to it. It's a show I've been keeping up with since before it even went to Broadway when Ben Platt won an Obie Award for it on Off-Broadway. But they released this tiny little book called You Will Be Found which is one of the songs for the show that is the act break and it's just a little tiny illustrated edition of the lyrics to the song you will be found and it's gorgeous like it's one of the prettiest little books i've ever seen if you know anybody who likes theater or knows dear evan hansen buy this for them because it's a great gift it's a little expensive for how small it is but it's so pretty i don't even care <laughs> like this 
It's probably one of my favorite purchases this year, even though it's like smaller than my face and it took me like two seconds to read. Like I sat down and read it while uh, listening to the song, which I highly recommend doing, but I adore this. This is a great song. This is a great show. Definitely pick it up if you have any interest in Dear Evan Hansen or even artwork because this is stunning. And then the two nonfiction books that I have read this year, one I read at the very beginning of the year and loved because I finally got the audiobook that I had been on hold for for like 600 years and that is Becoming by Michelle Obama. I adored this memoir. I, I actually really like Michelle Obama but I did not know a lot about like her personal life or anything and this like takes her through when she was growing up before she even met Barack Obama and everything and it was so well written. The audiobook is narrated by Michelle herself. Highly, highly, highly recommend if you have any interest in her or her husband or their time in office. I love them. This was a great book and I gave it five out of five stars. And then the other nonfiction that I read was The Girl with Seven Names, which oh, the author is escaping me, but her name is right here. But this book, I have heard of several like Escape from North Korea books in my time on booktube because obviously we don't know that much about North Korea. We know more than we used to, but still. This is a North Korean defector story, which I think it says on the cover. And I know another one of those came out like years ago that people were really hyped about. But this one I have never heard anybody talk about, I don't think. I don't even know how I came across it. This one focused a lot on not only the fact that she defected and like tried to escape and went somewhere else, but it also really focuses on the idea of what it's actually like living in North Korea, how you like fully believe that their dictator is like god or a god and the things they learn in school and everything just blew my mind there were things so many things in this book i did not know about north korea and i was absolutely fascinated it also taught me a lot about like i feel like parts of china and south korea because she ends up defecting through china and ends up in south korea and that you can find asylum in south korea if you are a north korean defector whenever this book was written at least i'm assuming that's still the case but this was fascinating this reads a lot like a thriller like it's really well written and very fast paced it's not that long so if you have any interest in that i highly recommend this one next up i want to talk about a series that technically i read scythe at like the very end of last year and it would have been my favorites of last year but i had so many favorites that i was like i'm just gonna talk about it in 2020 since I haven't talked about anything this year yet book wise but I would include the entire Scythe trilogy not only my favorite like it's gonna be on my favorites of this year because I'm counting it because I've read the vast majority of the series this year even though I read Scythe at the very end of last year in like one day I read these so fast this is such a fascinating series it's a series I've been hearing about on booktube for so many years like since the second Scythe came out I feel like or even I think it was around the time that Thunderhead came out which is the second book in the series and I flew through these. This is a dystopian future in which the world is in need of population control because nobody ever dies anymore. Like they have conquered old age being the reason people are dying, like people have to die. So to cope with population control they have created these sides in which you learn how to become an assassin essentially but you can do it in your own morally explained way I guess is the right way to say it. We follow two junior sides in this first book and the entire series becomes so political by the end of it and I adored every second of it. I loved all of her characters. Everybody's like kind of morally gray. I loved uh, Sy Faraday who is like the mentor in this one. Loved him as a character and this is just a super fascinating world. It's rekindled my love for Neil Shusterman who I read a lot of his books probably in middle school like Everlost and uh, I'm planning on reading the Unwind Dystology soon because I had never got around to reading it then. I read Dry, is that by him and his son last year and quite liked. So this has rekindled my love for Neil Schusterman. And if you have for some reason not picked the series up, definitely do love it. Gonna remain on my favorite series probably of all time. Next up is a book by Charles Soule, which I read his book The Oracle Year last year. I believe or the year before the end of 2018 I don't really remember <laughs> but that would be his new release anyone which this is what I wanted recursion by Blake Crouch to be recursion was not my favorite book in the world I love Blake Crouch's uh, Pines trilogy and then dark matter is down there 
but those are like some of my favorite sci-fi thrillers of all time like dark matter might actually be my favorite anyone is this fascinating premise of this woman accidentally she's looking for a cure for alzheimer's and she accidentally creates this invention in which you can transport your consciousness into another human being's consciousness and then it takes place in two different timelines of her trying not to give up <laughs> this invention and then the future in which it's like an everyday regular thing and like things happen on the black market regarding this invention of like transporting your consciousness and it makes law enforcement really hard <laughs> obviously because you can't like just describe people by their looks or anything because it could have not been them it could have been somebody else's consciousness in their body so this was really fascinating it was super fast paced i loved the audiobook if you're an audiobook person definitely find that i gave this 4.5 stars next up to talk about i have skyward by brandon sanderson if you've been here for a while you know i'm a big sanderson fan i read the vast majority of his books not all of them but the vast majority and this is a book I put off for a long time because I heard everybody talking about how the main character was like really rude and annoying. So I was like, ooh, I don't know if I'm gonna like that. Also it's YA, which is not what I normally read from Sanderson. I did not find Spenza nearly as annoying as everybody kept saying she was. I don't know if she just, I had a, a idea of her built up in my head that she was gonna be so annoying that I just like wasn't phased when she wasn't actually that bad <laughs> or what. But I did not find her nearly as annoying as everybody says she is. But I flew through this. This is one of the few books I read this year that I read with my face and not an audiobook. I'm a little bit scared to read the sequel which is over there that Kate gave me because she didn't like the sequel and she is that was the first Sanderson book she has ever DNF'd so I'm a little bit afraid to read it <laughs> but I will end up reading it eventually but I really enjoyed this and gave it 4.5 stars. The next up I read it's not even next up these are not in any order besides like rating but I also read the discovery the a Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. This is a book I've been hearing about on booktube for literally like seven years, probably, and it sounded fascinating back in the day. I always heard it described as adult twilight, <laughs> and that is not really what it is. It does involve vampires, so maybe that's where people got that idea, but it's a much more interesting paranormal world. Like there are vampires, demons, and witches, so I actually find the world more interesting than the actual like characters. I was pretty on board for the romance and I didn't think I was going to be so that was a pleasant surprise because I'm not always on board for that. <laughs> but I really enjoyed this. I'm planning on reading the rest of the trilogy sometime this year, hopefully this summer, but I flew through this like 500 page book way faster than I expected and it has stayed at like my most enjoyable, the top of my list of most enjoyable reads of this year. And this is where you'll begin to notice my me going off brand of my favorites usually being fantasy novels. That has not been the case this year. I actually haven't read that many fantasy novels because most of what I've been reading is audiobooks and I have a harder time with like straight up high fantasy on audiobook because it means I have to pay more attention and I always listen to audiobooks on two times speed. So in order to start a high fantasy, on audio I would have to like sit and do nothing else for like probably the first hour of the audiobook and get every all the characters right in my brain and I have not had the energy to do that so I've been reading more contemporary this year <laughs> and like two of my favorite books of the year have been contemporary who am I I don't know but that book in the top three would be One Day in December by Josie Silver and as I mentioned earlier I read her more recent release but this one was so much more impactful to me. This is a romance that seems slightly like insta-lovey if you think about it but it takes place over the course of 10 years and it the basic premise is this girl sees a man at a bus stop she's getting on the bus and he was like about to they make eye contact through the window and like she feels an instant connection and then the bus drives away and she never finds him. She spends like months looking for him and never sees him again. So she's really disappointed because she's like been trying to go out and find like the love of her life and she thought that she missed out on that opportunity because she didn't get to talk to him basically. And then she comes back I think a year or so later and her best friend is introducing her to her new boyfriend. To the best friend's new boyfriend and that new boyfriend is the man she saw at the bus stop and then we follow these three people over the course of the next 10 years of their life and the drama that ensues and it was a wild ride it was very very much like i would not want this to happen in real life but i would 100 percent watch a tv show or a movie based on this concept because it was fascinating to like 
think about of what you would do in that situation. Also, the ending of this made me like ball my eyes out. <laughs> like, I read this on audio and like for the last 30 minutes of the audio, I was just in tears. It's like super, like kind of a little bit cheesy, but also just seemed right. And I gave this five out of five stars. I do not give contemporaries five stars very easily and I have not since probably high school. So that's gonna seem weird when I talk about the next book, <laughs> but this is so good. If you're a romance reader, please read it. Even if you're not a romance or a contemporary person, please read it. And then the next book that I have to talk about that I have debated between these two of which has been my favorite of the year so far, it kind of changes on the day. The second favorite as of right now, book of this year and is definitely going to be on my favorites list regardless of what I read in the second half of the year. I'm just trying to see how much these two stick with me throughout the year and the first of those is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. I am not normally someone that's like oh I feel very seen by a book or I felt like I could re relate to the main character so so much and have it affect me this much but this was a emotionally abusive relationship that was like explored through flashbacks and the way this girl has PTSD from this guy she used to date that was on again off again for so long and I have never related to a human being so much in my life. It talks a lot about gaslighting and emotional abuse and like them trying to tell you you're crazy or you're wrong and what you remember isn't true which is what gaslighting is and I have never related so much to a main character ever because I have dealt with all of that. So it was just a surreal experience reading about and seeing somebody put into words all of the things that I felt years ago during a past relationship. So this hit just so close to home for me and that's why I loved it so much. I'm gonna read literally everything that Beth O'Leary comes out with. Obviously I don't think I'm gonna relate to as, as much as I did to this one but I also really liked her writing style and like just the basic premise is there are two people. One girl is looking for a flat to stay in and the idea is that she will stay during the day, the night and the guy stays during the day I believe was the setup and they are sharing a bed but at different times of the day so they like get to know each other through post-it notes and like what they leave around the house and everything because of their different schedules and then they eventually meet and it was really cute besides like on its own but the exploration of the girl's ex-boyfriend was the most interesting about this book to me and I absolutely adored it and I want to buy it. Our last book I have to talk about and my current favorite of the year is The Warehouse by a dude whose name I can't remember because I've never heard of him before. <laughs> I'm sorry, his name will be right there. But this is very much in the vein of the circle, at least in my brain, of the way it explores social issues. This one being there's this giant corporation, I believe it's called The Warehouse, and this guy wants to get a job there. It's two different perspectives, a guy and a girl. This girl is coming in to like find something wrong with the company and like sell information to like basically bring them down and then the guy comes in just literally wanting a job but has like a past with his family in the company that he's trying to ignore because he really needs this job money-wise. I have been describing it as what Amazon probably is like. Like the corporation, I feel it's very obvious that it's supposed to be based off of Amazon and like the warehouse is like the Amazon buildings, but it's like taken to an extreme of like people live there. It becomes your entire life to live in this warehouse and like do your job every single day. And they have like, it's basically its own little community. And it was so interesting. I absolutely adored it. I listened to this audio. I just remember the author's name is Rob Hart. <laughs> I'm gonna feel dumb because it's gonna be on the screen this whole time. But I adored this. I cannot wait to own it. If you liked The Circle or you like social commentaries in general in your like, I wouldn't even call them dystopian, just like slightly futuristic books is the only way I can think of to describe it for like an absolutely remarkable thing or the circle if you liked either of those books I think you should try this one out because I've never heard anybody else talk about it I literally think I found it because of the audiobook narrator was somebody that I've read or heard narrate before and I was fascinated by just the premise alone but this is my current favorite book of the year and I 
loved it so much and there was my 40 minute long wrap up i don't know how long this is going to be in editing but those are all of the books that i've read this year oh wait no it's not i have to name off the books that i didn't have much to say let me do that real quick so i read the hand on the wall by maureen johnson which is the conclusion to the truly devious series not my favorite conclusion but it was fine uh this fish is cure which is the conclusion to this mortal coil series trilogy which again it was fine i think i've just been disappointed in the series endings this year i read full disclosure which was a contemporary that involved my favorite musical rent and that's why i read it and it was fine i read tweet cute that was also fine it's just a cutesy contemporary of two high school kids I read the friend who i can't even remember the author but this was a really fascinating look at grief and like just a relationship between two human beings and what happens after one of them passes away and it involves a dog and it's the cutest thing in the world but also heartbreaking. I read The Silent Patient. This is just a thriller that was really big on booktube a couple years ago and it was, I thought it was fine. I didn't think the twist was that shocking but apparently some people did. And then last but not least I read Convenient Store Woman which I've been trying to get into like Asian literature and this is a Japanese lit book that I thought was just really interesting it was super solid I gave it 3.75 stars but I don't have a ton to say about it but yes those are all of the books that I've read this year or at least most of them I have a couple more to wrap up that I've read super recently that's the vast majority of the books that I've read this year thank you all for watching if you're still here please tell me what your favorite book of the year has been so far thank you all for watching and I will see all of you guys next time